Hello, one away class. Mr. McHugh here with you on section 9.1 quadratic equations. Here we're going to wrap up page five here, and we're going to serve, solve quadratic equations that have got complex solutions to them. Now, yeah, well, what's that all about? Basically, whenever you take the square root of a negative number, you introduce complex numbers because we are using the letter i, and trying to get us going here. X is your variable. K is a constant. Okay, x squared equals a negative k. You gotta take the square root on both sides to isolate the x. Thus you've introduced the square root of a negative number, plus or minus of the solutions. Make sure you see that plus or minus. I is to deal with the negative one and k is whatever number it is. Okay. And um, let's look at example seven here to get get more of a picture of this instead of having extra variables all over the place or letters. X squared plus 15 equals zero. You know your goal is to isolate the X squared. So you minus 15 on both sides. So now you've got X squared equals 15 and you go, oh, to isolate the X, I gotta take the square root on both sides and you do that. And then you know that you're gonna have plus or minus. And again, when doing your homework, nothing wrong with writing this symbol. It saves a lot of time. Plus or minus the square root of a negative one inside here converts to the i. We've done that back at uh, section 8.7, complex numbers, and you've got the square root of 15, and you can't break that down, and that would be your solution. Now, in my math lab, you give you the brackets, you are going to put negative i times the square root of 15, comma, positive i times the square root of 15 with the brackets, okay? Um, just make sure you understand that in my math lab, you can't use the plus or minus sign. Okay, let's try another example. We look at example B. Uh, we've got a binomial squared equals negative 16. That negative should catch your eye a little bit. So we turn around and go, what, do we, can, what can we do to isolate the x? It's a parenthesis squared, so take the square root on both sides. So here we go, we take the square root. We show that work. What drops down is the base, so you get x plus 2. Of course, you know, square root undoes squaring. Guess it's a broken record. And when you take the square root of a number, it introduces a positive or negative value. Uh, the negative 1 turns into an i, and you got the square root of 16, which is 4. And we got to watch this. I left it here. Now, um, I got a little sloppy, so let's, let's just watch the details. Now, you're still solving for x. So minus 2 on both sides, and you get minus 2 plus or minus. It really should be 4i. The 4 should be in front of the i, and that's because just like how we always do variables, we put the constant or the coefficient in front of the i. Okay, with that said, our final answer is negative 2 plus 4i, comma, and I'll put it down here, negative 2 minus 4i. Remember, they always start with these brackets when they put them in there. That's the solution set. Okay, so we're, we're doing pretty good here. We're getting used to this idea. It's just... Uh, you know, we've dealt with uh, square roots of negative numbers. We know it introduces the i for imaginary variables. So uh, look at example c here. And we're going to start with, uh, well, let's see if you could tell me. What, what do we got here? A, uh, x squared plus 2x plus 7. You could say it's a trinomial. It's set equal to 0. So you know it's a quadratic, and that's because it's got the square term. OK, so you look at that. And you know here's a case where you I say, hey, why don't I go ahead and I uh, use reverse FOIL and you will try to do that and you'll have a hard time coming up with factors that'll make it work. Okay, So we got to complete the square concept just to uh, uh, help you out a little bit as to why you don't do that. So we're going to minus 7 on both sides so we can match the form. I didn't write the step numbers down here but now you've got the x squared and the x on the left hand side, the constant on the right hand side, you're doing good. Now complete the square. You need to make a perfect square trinomial. What's the complete the squaring factor? Take the b, which is 2, cut it in half. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and square it. Ultimate result is what? 1. So you're going to add 1 to both sides. Don't forget that. You maintain balance, but you've added 1. Okay. Now what that's allowed you on the right-hand side is now you can complete the square, a.k.a. perfect square trinomial. Give yourself a set of parentheses. Take the square root of the first term. Take the square root of the second, third term. Bring down the sign. Give yourself the big squaring equals negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Now we go ahead and take the square root on both sides. Drops down the base x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 6. Okay, 
minus 1 on both sides and now you've got x equals negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 6. Okay, that final answer, I got room to put it in here, is negative 1 plus i times the square root of 6. Now remember, we put the i in front because of the radical. We don't want to stick it over here. We wouldn't be, we would not know for sure whether it's underneath the radical or outside, comma. Now you've got your second solution is negative 1. You did the plus, and so now it's the minus i square root of 6. Okay, class. Good news. Adios. We've done section 9.1. We're moving and cruising here. So um, come back. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the quadratic formula on section 9.2. And um, I'll catch you there on the next video. Okay, so for now, I'll say goodbye.